Why is gravity different on the moon than on the Earth? Well, the gravity that you feel when you're standing on the surface of a planet depends on two things. It depends on the mass of the planet, how much stuff is packed into it, and how big it is. And when you do the math, there's just a, an equation, it's actually pretty simple, and you plug in the math and the size of the planet and you can calculate how much gravity it is. When you do that for the Earth, you just find out that the Earth has more gravity because mostly it's just a lot more massive than the Moon. And so the Earth's gravity is about six times stronger than the Moon when you're standing on the surface. But there are other planets too. Mars has less mass than the Earth, and when you stand on its surface, the gravity is eh, about half of the Earth's. But Jupiter is a lot more massive, and so its gravity is a lot stronger. Jupiter doesn't really have a surface, it basically just has you know, a really thick atmosphere. But if you were sort of floating in the cloud tops of Jupiter, you'd feel a pull more than twice what you'd feel on the Earth. And so it just all depends on how big the object is and, and how much mass it has. Why are planets round? Well, planets are round because of gravity. If they have enough mass and they're big enough, then their gravity gets strong enough that it can actually pull everything towards the center, and that makes a nice round ball. And it takes an object of a certain size to be able to do that. The moon is about uh, 2,000 miles across, and it's, it's a ball, so we know it's big enough to do that. And there are smaller objects like Ceres, which is an asteroid, which is less than 1,000 miles across, and it's, it's pretty, much a, pretty much a sphere. So something around 1,000 miles across is usually massive enough to do this. But if they're smaller, they're not. I'm not massive enough, my gravity isn't enough to pull me into a sphere, and objects that are bigger than planets do as well, like stars. So it really just depends on, on, on the gravity of the object. How deep do the gases of Jupiter go? Well, Jupiter's about roughly 90,000 miles across. And if you go down into Jupiter's atmosphere, it's got a very thick atmosphere, and that's all we see when we look at it, is just the, just the clouds that we see on top of Jupiter. If you go down a few thousand miles, the pressure gets stronger and stronger, and basically the gas gets compressed into sort of a liquid. And so you, if you go down about six or 7,000 miles, that's when that happens. That's roughly the diameter of the Earth. Jupiter is 11 times wider than the Earth. You could fit 11 Earths going across Jupiter. So if you go down one Earth size into Jupiter's atmosphere, it starts to turn into sort of a weird liquid kind of a thing. It's very bizarre. And as you go farther down, it actually gets compressed into like a metal. And then eventually you get to the core of the planet, which is probably four or five times the mass of the Earth. And that's probably rock and metals and things kind of like what the Earth is made of. Is Neptune or Uranus solid ice? No, actually they're gas giants, kind of like Jupiter. They have a core that's probably rock and metal and ice, and then their atmosphere is very thick and it acts kind of like a liquid, but then at the top of them it's a very thick atmosphere, just like Jupiter. And so when we look at them, we're just seeing the, the tops of their atmospheres as well. Why is Uranus on its side? Well, nobody knows, but what we think happened is that when it first formed, something huge like a planet, like something the size of the Earth, smashed into it and tipped it over onto its side. So that now, instead of spinning more or less up and down like the Earth does, you, you've probably seen a globe where the Earth is tilted a little bit. The Earth is tilted as it spins around and goes around the Sun. Uranus is actually tilted over on its side. Venus spins upside down. Venus is almost all the way over like this. It spins the wrong way. So we think that any planet that's tilted, and this is supposed to be the sun here, as it goes around the sun, we think that they probably got smashed by some huge object which knocked them over. Can a moon have a moon? Well, kinda. Um, if you have a moon orbiting a planet, it's actually hard to keep something orbiting it for a long time. Eventually the gravity interaction between the planet and the moon and everything tend to make that second moon crash into the moon. But it's possible to do it for a little while, and in fact, we have sent space probes to the moon. And they orbit the moon for a long time, and they can orbit for hundreds or even thousands of years. No, those are, those are artificial moons, right? They're satellites, they're man-made satellites. But they do orbit the moon, so you can do that. Can you touch a comet? And is it possible to land on an asteroid? Well, sure. Comets are basically giant chunks of ice, 
with dirt and rock and stuff frozen in on them. And so they are solid in the very center. You can actually touch them. And in fact, we've actually slammed a probe into one. There was a probe called Deep Impact, which dropped a, a really heavy copper block into a comet to make a crater. And it, would, it, it, it sort of excavated out stuff, blew stuff out off the comet. We could look and see what the comet was made of by doing this, which was pretty cool. And we've actually sent probes to asteroids that have orbited them, and one even landed on the surface of an asteroid. And asteroids are basically rock or metal, and they're, they're pretty big. Some of them are small, a mile or two across, even smaller than that. But the biggest one, Ceres, is actually hundreds and hundreds of miles across. And so uh, we plan on sending missions to some of these to land on them and see what's going on. But in fact, one of our robot probes already did this. It was called the Near-Earth Asteroid Rendezvous, or NEAR. And after it orbited the asteroid Eros, or Eros, depending on how you want to pronounce it, orbited it for a year, eventually landed on the surface and was actually, take, was actually able to take pictures from very close up. Very cool stuff. So the answer is yes, you can touch a comet and you can land on an asteroid. People are talking about having life on the moon Titan. With all the methane there, how would we live with the smell of that? Wouldn't it be like living in a toilet filled with thousands of pounds of poo? Well, that's a pretty good question. Titan is a moon of Saturn, and it does have a very thick atmosphere made mostly of methane. In fact, its atmosphere is thicker than the Earth's, which is kind of surprising. Titan is, is not as big as the Earth. It's about as big as the planet Mercury, but it does have a very thick atmosphere. The thing is, it, we wouldn't live in that atmosphere. If you were to put humans on the surface of Titan, because the atmosphere is, is poisonous, we can't breathe methane, and because it is so cold there, we'd have to live in, in, in you know, domes or something on the surface so that we wouldn't actually have to, to go out and breathe the atmosphere. But I'll tell you a secret. It's not the methane that smells bad. Methane by itself doesn't smell like anything. It's odorless. It's actually other types of molecules that are in poo, that make it smell bad. And so if you, if you want to, feel free to look up how all that works. But in fact, methane doesn't smell like anything. So if you went to Titan and it weren't freezing cold and, and you could smell the atmosphere, it probably wouldn't smell like much of anything. How likely is it to have a meteor hit the school? Well, that depends on what you mean. To actually have one come in and you know, smack into the school, very, very unlikely. Um, any one spot on the Earth, the chances of getting hit by a meteor, meteorite are tiny, basically zero. But the Earth is big, and in fact, we do have a lot of these things come in every day. 20 to 40 tons of dust, of meteors, burn up in the atmosphere every single day. 20 to 40 tons. And that stuff mixes in with the Earth's air and settles down. And, and basically, when it rains, the stuff rains out of the air. So actually, you're hit by meteors all the time. It's in the rain that, that, that when it rains on your school. And so um, you can think of it that way. Hey, you get hit by meteors all the time. But for actually to have one come in and smack into your school and destroy it and make a giant crater and everything, ah, I wouldn't worry about it. It's not very likely. If you hit a golf ball on the moon, will it go faster than on the Earth and burn up? Because I saw that on a Gatorade commercial. Well, don't believe everything you see in commercials. First of all, the speed of a golf ball depends on how hard you hit it. So, you know, if you take a, a golf club, not a pencil, but a golf club, and hit that ball, how fast it goes depends on how hard you swing. Just like a baseball, the, the harder you swing, the faster the baseball will go. And so it doesn't have really anything to do with the gravity on the moon or the Earth. Now, on the Earth, we have air, and that slows the ball down a little bit. So really, on the moon, it might go a little bit faster because there's no air resistance. On the moon, it'll also go farther because there's less gravity to pull it down. And on the Earth, the ball goes up, right, and it goes down. But on the moon, it'll go a lot farther because the gravity is lower. But there's no air on the moon, and so it won't burn up. I think in that commercial, I think I've seen that commercial, the, the, the ball actually goes and then burns up, I think, in the Earth's atmosphere. The person actually hits it off the moon, and it goes all the way to the Earth and then burns up like a meteor. But that's almost impossible. You'd have to hit that ball really, really fast to be able to get it off the moon and get it back to the Earth. And it's way, way, way faster than anybody could ever hit it. So, you know, don't believe everything you see in commercials.